Question of the day, is it worth paying a big premium, sometimes thousands and thousands of dollars, to get the John Deere green or Kubota orange paint? Well, I've got my own opinion on that, if it's worth it or not, but I'm gonna be as objective as possible, give you some information, some food for thought to help you make your own decision. Behind me here, we have a big Kubota tractor, we've got a John Deere cab tractor, and an LS tractor, all right? So John Deere and Kubota are kind of what my channel is known for. I do have a preference to deal with those and I'll get into that, the reasons why. However, we recently made a video, made a pretty strong case for the LS tractors or New Holland. And so this LS tractor is representative of all the value brands out there. And in my mind, value brands are LS or New Holland. You have Mahindra, you have Massey, you have Coyote. You have some others as well that kind of come and go, but there's also trade-offs that come along with those value prices. And so let's work through that today, see if the extra cost for some of these bigger, more popular brands, is it all just marketing or are you getting more bang for your buck? So there's quite a few reasons why I've historically chosen to carry pretty much exclusively John Deere and Kubota tractors. So I buy and sell used tractors. I sell brand new attachments that go along with any tractor that's out there virtually. But as far as the tractors go, I'm not affiliated with John Deere, not affiliated with Kubota, but there's a lot of reasons I sell just those two brands for the most part. And so for me, for my customer base, you know, I sell equipment nationwide. And so I have a very large audience and a very large following, a very large potential customer base. And for me, I talked about it in the LS video too, but if we want to first talk about the amount of dealers that are out there to get your service done on your tractor, to have uh, repairs done, to have uh, parts available if you want to do things yourself. Well, we talked about how there's six times as many John Deere dealers spread around the U.S. compared to the amount of LS dealers. Or there's double the amount of Kubota dealers compared to the amount of LS dealers. So that means there's that many more opportunities for folks you know, that are in larger, uh, maybe not metropolitan areas, but larger farming communities or just different locations to potentially have a Kubota dealer or a John Deere dealer versus an LS dealer. So for me as a reseller of used machinery, I want to make sure that there's a higher chance or a higher probability for my customers to be located near one of those dealers and I can do that or I can increase that chance by selling John Deere and Kubota. And what I mean by that is I am looking to make sure that my customer is set up for success, right? If there's no dealer that's within 100 or 200 miles, then that's unless they're really handy, which a lot of guys are moving out, buying a homestead, buying five, 10 acres, kind of getting away from the city. A lot of you guys are first time tractor owners. You know, you don't want to be wrenching on your equipment. You don't know how to wrench on your equipment. You want to pay somebody else to do that. And that's perfectly fine. John Deere and Kubota have a lot of great mechanics. That's why they're there. So that's point number one. I'm making a difference between the big two brands and something like LS or Mahindra or somebody else's, that proximity to your dealer, to your service, to your parts. All right, if we talk about just features that are found on these tractors in general. So within the John Deere and Kubota lineups, they are gonna have so many different series and models that you're gonna find premium additions, you're gonna find value additions. So you're gonna have a, a wide spectrum across the board. So if you are looking at some of those value series, they may or may not compare with something like an LS or a Mahindra. When we did our comparison recently with the LS over here, this is a 40 horsepower tractor. I was comparing that against a John Deere 3039R, which is a premium John Deere model. It was on, on paper, that was the closest matchup. Some guys commented that they thought it should have been matched up with the John Deere 3E series, but I don't think that that was a very fair comparison. On paper, again, the specs were not even close with a 3E series. That is meant to be a very stripped down, value-oriented tractor that is almost on par with more of a two series and a three series. And I could be wrong, but it seemed like a lot of those guys that were trying to compare the LS to the 3E series we're kind of biased towards the LS. Now, all that said, some of the things that I have found historically on some of the value brands that you want to look out for, the biggest one being a quick attach bucket, like two levers, a skid steer quick attach bucket to release your bucket, be able to put on pallet forks, a grapple, a snow pusher, some other attachment to open up the versatility of your front end loader. I send out quotes every day every single day for folks that have these value tractors that either have some goofy um, very custom quick attach mount for that specific brand or they have a pinned on bucket and want to convert that to a quick attach bucket you're wasting money by paying that upcharge to go and convert to a quick attach bucket so you want to look for that if you're buying new request that SSQA or skid steer quick attach right up front but as far as what's going on underneath the hood the chassis a lot of those main components with the engines those are all made from manufacturers that build 
tens of thousands of tractors and other pieces of machinery a year. These are well proven engines and transmissions for the most part. Yes, there are going to be trade offs in engineering. You're going to see Maybe electrical issues are a good example on, on some of the value brands um, start to crop up more and, and become problematic, although it still seems like it's a sporadic issue. There's certain models or maybe certain generations. You can find those models just by doing a little bit of research. Just open up a tab on Google, type in whatever the make and model is and click the word problems. You're gonna see, you're gonna have those identified and you know what models to avoid at that point. But the flip side again is even with John Deere and Kubota, <laughs> I've lost track of how many times, whether it's been under warranty or not, that I have taken equipment in to have repairs done because even the best engineering in the world is not foolproof, but potentially it lowers the probability of those unexpected repairs occurring. But touching back on our first point, if you have a dealer at least somewhat nearby, that's gonna soften the blow a little bit. Now, when we compared that John Deere 3039R to this LS model right here, there was a significant difference. You know, this loader on the LS lifted a lot more weight. I think it was six or 700 pounds more than the comparable John Deere, but the difference was just the same on the back end with the John Deere lifting a lot more on the three point compared to the LS. But you gotta look at things closely as well. So I know that this loader did not lift nearly as high. I think it was eight inches lower of a maximum height. If you're not lifting it as high, you should be able to lift more. But I'd encourage you to check out a place like Tractor Data. They're gonna have maybe not every tractor model on there, but many of them. You know, and it's a good place to reference to get those lift capacities, to get the weight of the tractor, the length of the tractor, the height of the ROPS, um, you know, the three-point lift capacity, the three-point category size, all that information so you can kind of make a as close of an apples to apples comparison. These manufacturers are pretty good at not allowing you to have a true apples to apples comparison and, and a head to head match, you know, and that could be within the John Deere and Kubota lineup itself, or if you're comparing one of them to another, they're just all over the map. They're always trying to fill a little gap in the market. And so there's gonna be certain features found on some tractors that are not on others and vice versa. And you're gonna have to prioritize what's most important to you based on your needs and your wants, and let that kind of guide you to the right selection. The point being is that just because you're getting a value tractor doesn't necessarily mean you're losing all sorts of features or capacity or capability. There could be some trade-offs here and there. I know this model does not have a suspension seat, an air ride seat. Um, I'm told that the newer generation does have that option. Maybe this one does, I don't know. But for the savings, getting a tractor like this versus a John Deere 3039R where you could pay twelve, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 less. The, look at that video in the comment section. There were some guys saying that they just couldn't justify it. There were differences as high as twenty grand in a comparable model in an LS versus a John Deere. Now, so we talk about reliability and you want your tractor to last a long time, right? So a lot of us buy our machine thinking that this is gonna be the one that you know that the kids sell off after we're gone. But I'm in business because that's not the case most of the time. So a lot of guys are, are buying a tractor and using it for a certain set of projects and selling it off, or they're buying it realizing they want a cab tractor, not an open station, or realizing they bought too small, or they have to downsize, or whatever it is. There's a lot of reasons that you may sell your tractor. And so most of us guys here are, are not gonna put more than 50 to 100 hours on average a year on our equipment. And I know there's some of you out there that put a lot more on there. I mean, we've got a buddy just down the street. I'm, I'm talking about you, Eric Perry. Yeah, he put, oh, I don't know, like 300 and some hours or something like that on his tractor in the last year. He's just been working the heck out of it and having a lot of fun. Uh, you may have seen him in some previous videos we did with a bomb light stump grinder at his house and everything else, but uh, most of us, that's the exception to the rule. Let me put it that way. Most of us are kind of in that 50 to 100 hour a year range. While these tractors are typically gonna last maybe five to 15,000 hours before that engine wears out and has to be rebuilt, just depending on how it's maintained, what kind of environment it's used in, and maybe a little bit of luck too. But this really isn't commercial equipment, so to speak. This is being used on farms and on homesteads and on the weekends and after work, just to knock out projects. And part of the reason those hours I think stay so low is because they're so efficient. They're so good at doing their job where a job that you may have thought by hand or with a wheelbarrow or the, the UTV in a trailer was gonna take you all day could end up taking you just two hours with a tractor to do it. All right, so I wanna talk about a really important topic which is gonna be depreciation slash resale value if you do end up selling it down the road. Up until the last 18, well, up until the pandemic started, I should say, it was a completely different market than what we have today. And oftentimes I would have folks that wanted to trade in an LS or a Mahindra or a Massey or, or something else. And you know, they were shocked by how little I would give them for that tractor. But 
I came to those decisions, those values that I would offer for this equipment based on what I had seen when I had outright purchased a Coyote or outright purchased a Massey or an LS and wanted to resell it on my own and how little interest it drew. And so a lot of that is really brand awareness and that's where John Deere and Kubota Excel they, they have a huge marketing budget and that obviously shows you, you can't go online or on TV without seeing their commercials and it looks great. Everybody wants those, but people don't know about these smaller brands. They don't know what to expect. They don't know if they're gonna be around a couple of years from now or if they're just gonna be like a, a Walmart, you know, throw it in the garbage can after a couple of years and call it good and move on. And so what I found is that if I wanna sell a comparable LS model to a, a similar used Kubota model, I have to make that a huge price gap because otherwise if it's only a thousand bucks difference or two thousand dollar difference, basically everybody's going to choose that Kubota model over the LS. The LS is going to sit there. So that price gap needs to be gigantic in order to offer enough incentive for somebody to realize the savings are going to maybe outweigh the benefit of getting a bigger name brand. But there's a big difference in depreciation, all right? Everybody has to start out buying these tractors new. Whether you're buying it used or not, somebody bought it new. So that initial depreciation drop that I found historically on those value brand tractors is going to be somewhere in that 30, 35%. So like a third of the value just evaporates. You can that to a John Deere or Kubota and you're kind of in that traditional 15% ish maybe 10 maybe 20% somewhere around there depreciation hit and if we're talking about money I don't think of tractors as assets they are liabilities they are going to depreciate and so that difference in depreciation rate is pretty dramatic and so if you're paying on it right you're losing less money if you're paying on the Kubota than you are paying on the LS and so eventually that difference is going to kind of bottom out you know if you have a tractor that has a thousand hours on it it's not going down to five grand, right? There's a bottom, unless your tractor is completely burnt out and beat up, you're going to retain a certain amount of value and never hit zero. So that depreciation gap starts pretty big right from the beginning. And so you're going to retain more value with one of these bigger guys than you are with a value brand. I've had quite a few occurrences of used tractors that I bought, say, um, what I've done a couple times is like a 2008, 2009 John Deere 3032E, for example, where that may have four, five, 600 hours on it. And within the last two or three years, so maybe that tractor is 10, 11 years old, I sold it for the same amount that it sold for new <laughs> 10 or 11 years ago. But the market is changing. The market's crazy right now. Prices are out of control. They're all over the map. It's hard to get new inventory. And so that drives the price up of all the used equipment as well. Some of it is going for near new prices just because you can get your hands on it right away. And so in my opinion, I think that's gonna continue for quite some time. This is not gonna stabilize, I don't think for, for years really. And so that's gonna really help out these value tractors on maintaining their value and making them more appealing. You know, so there's a lot to think about and these are big decisions for a lot of you guys. And what I have found as well is that support from the community, from the tractor world in general can go a long way. Traditional dealers are open from, you know, eight to five and a half day on Saturdays. And sometimes you have a need or a problem or you don't have time to think about something going on with your tractor until it's after hours, but you wanna knock it out, you wanna work on it. And so a tractor forum is a great place to get synced in with the community and the Kubota and John Deere's of the world has some really good forums. There's just such a large volume of John Deere and Kubota owners out there that you can lean on their experience or if there is an issue that's uh, happened to your tractor, it may have happened to somebody else out there and already had a solution in mind and how to correct it. If you're looking to do some modifications or some add-ons, you know, you're gonna open your eyes to all the different things that other folks are doing to their tractors. And it's not to say you can't get that somewhat with the value brands as well, but the sheer quantity of owners that are out there is just, it's not microscopic, but it's substantially lower than the big two. And so you're gonna to have to lean on more of the general community, the general tractor forum, just to kind of get some ideas on what to do, but that intimate knowledge of the brand may be lacking. You know, and it's worth mentioning as well that we work with a lot of manufacturers that make aftermarket accessories, just little bolt-on accessories and, and other grab handles and whatnot that are designed to work with the, the existing holes, the existing geometry of the John Deere and Kubotas of the world where there's just not enough volume out there, potential volume for these manufacturers to put in the time and the effort and the engineering to create products for some of these other value brands. Maybe we'll get there at some point, but that's gonna be a ways down the road. So yeah, while for me, I do focus primarily on the John Deere and the Kubota, I do think there's a good, strong case to be made for some of these value tractors, again, 
make your list, make your checklist of what's important to you. You know, I mean, some of those models, I'd encourage you, do your research out there and see if you are getting into a problem child. Now, I always like to point out to any customer, I get a lot of folks that reach out and ask me what tractor they should get. And I always tell them if they're anywhere near this size machine to stay away from the Kubota B3350. It is a problem child. You can read all about it. You can spend days reading about the problems going on with that tractor. But I say that to paint a clear picture that just because you see John Deere or Kubota right up front does not mean it's problem free. You gotta do your due diligence. Make sure you're buying a model that's known to be reliable. That's gonna wrap it up for us today. If you did enjoy this video, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. If you enjoy tractor videos, watching projects at work, we'd love to have you join. Hit that subscribe button down below. And if you want something for your tractor, something for that front end loader, the three point hitch, we can help you out. We ship tractor attachments all over the country. Check out goodworkstractors.com. Thanks for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Yeah.